Hello everybody, what is up? It's Eddie Neddy and welcome to the EFL Championship Predictions video. And oh my days, I am well prepared to get slated in the comments from you all for this video. Hope you guys do go on to enjoy it. Let me know your championship predictions in the comments, of course. But anyway, let's kick it off. I do have a list right next to me to kind of follow through out of teams which I have uh, placed off camera. But anyway, let's go with the first one. It might actually change whilst to go for him. Anyway, the first one I've said to go for is Oxford United in 24th. I think Oxford United, I think they obviously had a great season last season, despite, you know, the replacement of Liam Manning with Dennis uh, Buckingham. I feel like um, Oxford had a, obviously a great year winning in the playoff final. You could... The reason why I put them down there, I think, multiple reasons, the lack of experience from both the team and the manager... I think the fact that they have lost arguably their best player in Murphy uh, to actually a rival Portsmouth, a team which might be down there as well. Uh, but yeah, I think, however, in terms of the positive outlet for them, obviously Cameron Brannigan has signed a new contract. They brought in some a little bit of experience to the team. Matt Ingram, who is a uh, goalkeeper. They've also, uh, I think, brought Jamie Cumming back to the club as well. They've also signed El uh, Mazzuni, Mazzuni, who's a young uh, Tunisian central defence midfielder. So yeah, I've tried to go with Oxford at 24th. Let me know your thoughts in the comments of that one. So, with 23rd in the league, I have decided to go with uh, Plymouth. I think Plymouth under Wayne Rooney might potentially struggle. Um, I think the squad that they've got is okay. Um, however, you do wonder whether, you know, we've still got the rest of the window to go. Morgan Whitaker has had a lot of heavy interest in him, you know, from abroad. So, maybe Morgan Whitaker is going to leave Plymouth. That is the next question. Um, I think Plymouth might surprise people a little bit in terms of, I think they'll do better. Well, not better, but I feel like they will not do as bad as some people predict. I know I put them to get relegated, but I still think they will be, you know, in and around the fight till the end of the season. Uh, but yeah, Plymouth, I've decided to go with 23rd. Okay, 22nd, I've decided to go with is... Oh, I'm torn between two teams at the moment because I feel like it'll either be Derby or Portsmouth. So I feel like it'll be either one of them 22nd and one of them 21st. I am going to go with Portsmouth again, I think for the lack of experience within the Portsmouth squad. Unfortunately, best wishes to Colby Bishop as well, uh, but I think potentially losing him for a long period of time could be a huge loss, but obviously, really hope he does recover. I think some of the signings they've made haven't screamed, you know, excellent. I feel like they've been okay, the signings they've made. I don't really know a lot about them. I know they've signed another Australian fella. Um, but yeah, I've gone Portsmouth as 22nd. Let me know your thoughts. 21st, I'm going to go with Derby County. I think Derby County, despite, you know, um, having a bit of a, uh, you know, just securing automatic promotion at the end of last season, competing with Bolton Wanderers. Um, I think Derby, their experience might definitely help them in the championship, you know, after bouncing back, um, you know, the second time of asking for Derby County, obviously not festering in League One for that long. Um, so yeah, I've started going this 21st. I really am tempted to maybe switch them round Portsmouth and Derby, but I do think these two will be neck and neck for the final two relegation spots. Next team I'm sorry to go with, I'm going to go with Blackburn Rovers. John Eustace team, I think uh, John Eustace will keep Blackburn in the championship. However, I do think they will struggle and they'll be in and around there. A bit like what he did uh, with Birmingham until, you know, the last little bit um, of the season. I feel like they, he will build up the squad, build up the unity. I think Blackburn's trance window so far has been very quiet, despite making two signings at the time of announcing this in less than... 24 hours but you know compared to other championship clubs have had a bit of a quiet window and the potential departure of Sammy Skimonics could really affect them so I've gone with Blackburn in 20th let me know your thoughts again right 19th I've decided to go in Millwall which is Neil Harris's team I think they will struggle this season Millwall Maskman and Neil Harris despite when Neil Harris first came in they done great but then towards the back end of it they done quite poor so uh yeah, and I feel like, um, you know, again, I feel like if you 
searching for mediocrity, I feel like you are going to struggle. And I think that's what Millwall are doing under Daniel Harris, in my opinion. Uh, I think their transfer window so far that I can think has been quite quiet. I know they've signed Lucas Jensen uh, to bolster their goalkeeping department. They've signed Yafet Tanganga, which I believe is a fantastic signing for them. But, you know, yeah, I've gone with Millwall at 19th. 18th in the championship, I have decided to go with Sheffield Wednesday for 18th. I think Sheffield Wednesday are obviously doing really well under Danny uh, Roll, despite losing a lot of their squad so far. They have brought in so many new signings, you know, like Jan Valery, Jamal Lowe, they've been into Ogbo, Sori Kappa. They brought in loads of other players right now. I just can't think of the top of my head. Obviously, Barry Bannon is staying at the club. Um, you know, I swear they brought in a goalkeeper as well. But anyway, they've made some great signings so far, Sheffield Wednesday, and that's why I predict them to uh, be 18th, because I generally do think, in, I believe in Danny Roll. The only worry is, you know, is Danny Roll going to be the manager of Sheffield Wednesday throughout the entire season? There has been a lot of interest in him, you know, especially during this summer for some clubs that have been without a manager. So I think mean, that is probably Sheffield Wednesday's biggest worry, in my opinion, at the moment. Next team, I'm going to say to go in 17th, is QPR. QPR are a club which I think have had an absolute phenomenal turnaround in Marty Sifentes, and I feel like they will do that. QPR have been a little bit quiet in the trans winners so far. They have made a couple of signings, but obviously losing Chris Willock, despite he wasn't necessarily a big part of QPR last season. He was a big part for them for quite a few years. You do feel like you losing a player of that quality, especially to a championship rival, could be a big problem. So I've decided to go QPR in at 17th, just above the relegation, you know, package really, and that'll be down there. I think QPR will do all right this season, but I don't think they will, you know, be within the playoffs or anything like that, which a lot of people are putting to me. 16th in the league, I'm going to decide to go with Preston North End. I think Preston are a side which are very medi mediocre. You know, I think losing, probably in my opinion, their player of the season last season, Liam Miller, um, which I think is a huge loss for them. You know, to return back to uh, Basel, I believe it is, in Switzerland. Their signings, they've signed Greenwood, you know, the, uh, who was at uh, Middlesbrough last season. They've signed some uh, player, I believe, some Danish uh, club. Uh, I'm not sure on his name, but he has a pretty decent record on him, to be fair. But a big ask for him to go from you know, the Danish or the Icelandic league to go to uh, England into the championship. You know, and obviously not that high profile, but I just don't really rate Preston. I don't rate Ryan Lowe, uh, but I do think they'll be fine. They, they will obviously will stay up, but I don't think they'll do that great. Let me know your thoughts again. Okay, so just above Preston, I've tried to go with uh, Stoke City. I think Stoke have had a decent window so far. I think the signing of Victor Johansson, great signing. You know, in my opinion, I think one of the best goalkeepers in the division, the Swedish uh, shot stopper. Um, they've obviously made a few other signings, rumours of players' departures. Josh Laurent could leave the club. Um, so, yeah, I'm intrigued to see how they are going to do on that front. Stoke City, I know they've signed some other players. They've signed, they've made some very odd signings. Uh, they've signed some French fella who's just turned 21, I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, I've gone with Stoke in at 15th. 14th in the league, I have decided to go with Bristol City. I think Bristol City have been really intriguing so far in the trans window. They spent a lot of money. They spent three million rumoured going to foot mob on a forward played for Rapid uh, Vane in Austria. Um, they've signed some really interesting players. So I'm really intrigued to see how Bristol City will do. Obviously, they're heavily linked with Scott Twine as well. You do wonder whether that deal could potentially happen. But yeah, Bristol City in 14th. Let me know your thoughts. 13th in the league, I've decided to go with Cardiff. I think Cardiff have definitely surprised a few people in the trance window. Obviously, they've managed to keep Bullet as the uh, manager. Bullet, the uh, Turkish manager, who had a great year last year, I've, in my opinion, with Cardiff. Guided them towards mid-table and finished uh, not just outside the playoffs, but were competing, you know, to get inside the playoffs the majority of the season. Excuse me. 
All right, so yeah, I've decided to go with uh, Cardiff City in 13th. I believe that's right. Yep, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Yep. So I was going to go with Cardiff. Obviously, they've signed Callum Chambers. They've signed Chris Willock. I'm intrigued how the rest of the window will go. Now, we're on to the top half of the table. Now, this is where things are going to get interesting. So in 12th, I am going to go with Sunderland. I think Sunderland um, ha went so long that a manager and appointed an intriguing manager in Libris. I believe that's pronounced his name. It was the former manager of Valurant. Uh, in terms of their chance of window being pretty quiet, they've signed Simon Moore to bolster their goalkeeper department. They've signed Alan Brown, you know, a uh, midfielder. They've extended the contract of Dominic Bullard. So in my opinion, I feel like they'll have a mediocre season. Obviously, they're a big club. Uh, I think keeping Jack Clark could be the difference between them finishing high mid-table or them finishing, you know, around about here, maybe even here, but I think I'm with Sutherland in 12th. 11th, I've decided to go with is Swansea City. I know I put Swansea City quite high, which maybe I surprised quite a few of you all. Um, I think Swansea played some really good, attractive football. Their transfer window has been really interesting. They signed Eom Shi Song, who is a young South Korean winger. They've signed a young Portuguese midfielder called Franco. So, and they've also signed a Burnley goalkeeper, used formerly to play for Latin Orient. Like, I can't remember his name, like, v v Vigu, Vigux, or something like that. He's a young Chilean, uh, well, not young, he's a Chilean goalkeeper who was really good in League One for Latin Orient. I mean, Treat how he's going to do with Swansea City. Swansea City, I would say, have had a bit of a poor running with goalkeepers apart from Carl Rushworth from last season. But yeah, I've decided to go with Swansea 11. Let me know your thoughts. I think this one is definitely, in my opinion, the most boldest one. But I think Swansea will have a good year, in my opinion. Tenth in the league, I've decided to go with Hull City. Hull City have lost a incredibly a lot in the transfer window so far. Obviously losing Liam Delap, despite I know he was a Man City player, but obviously not getting him back at the club. I feel like it could be a huge loss. Obviously you losing Philogene Badace, Jacob Greaves, you know, two of arguably their best players is going to be a huge loss for them. And losing their lone player last season in Fabio Carvello as well, who was really good for them towards the end of the season. So I've decided to go with Hull 10th in the league. Let me know your thoughts. And I feel like maybe that's been a little bit generous. Ninth, we're going to go with Watford. We're going to go Watford in ninth. I think Watford do have some quality in their side. They've had a really intriguing trans winner, Musa Sissoko, returning back to the club on a permanent basis, signing a two-year contract. I don't think Tom Cleverley will be the manager for long at Watford. I definitely think they will go big and ambitious again and uh, bring in a new manager and they'll keep them just outside the playoffs. Uh, but I'm intrigued to see how Watford will do. They haven't had a great preseason. Next team we're going to go with in 8th, which I believe that's 8th, yep, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, yep, Middlesbrough. We're going to go with in 8th. I think Middlesbrough are a side which are very intriguing with the way they play. Um, I think under Michael Carrick as well, their transfer window business has been very quiet. They've signed Bergzorg, they've signed a midfielder from America, uh, I believe from Columbus Crew. But yeah, I've decided to go with Middlesbrough in 8th. Let me know your thoughts. Seventh in the league, I'm going to go with Coventry, just missing out on the playoffs. I think Coventry are a side which um, have, obviously, I don't know, I, obviously losing Callum O'Hare is a big loss for them. I'm intrigued that the rest of the transfer window will go. I think Ellis Sims and Wright will have big boots to fill, but I think their quality is definitely good enough to stay pushing towards the top six. And sixth. Now we're going to move on to is West Bromwich Albion. I think West Brom will just make it in the sixth position with Carlos Corbahan despite a uh, struggling trance window. I kind, I kind of want to stop this signing Paddy McNair, however, but losing Cedric Kipre, you know, their first choice defender, is going to be a huge loss for them. And obviously with the injury record of Daryl Dickey as well, uh, isn't going to be great. But financial issues with West Bromwich Albion, where they've still got the likes of Jed Wallace, Swift... Obviously, Thomas Asante could depart as well. He's been heavily linked to a move to Hull City. Uh, but yeah, West Brom sixth. 
fifth in the league, I'm going to decide to go with Norwich. I think Norwich will do really well this season under their new manager. Uh, they've got a new uh, Danish manager who is determined to play some attractive, uh, good football. And I definitely do think would be an incredible uh, sight to watch for Norwich this season. Their chance to win a bit very quiet, losing Sam McCallum. I think it'll be a huge loss for them. I know they've recently signed a player from the Brazilian league, but apart from that, it's pretty quiet. And now we move on to Sheffield United, who I'm going to put in at fourth in the league. Sheffield United have had a mad trend with so far. So many signings. Callum O'Hare, Sam McCallum, uh, Kian, uh, Kia, uh, Kijan uh, Hoover, the uh, young right back, Kifo uh, Moore as well. However, the departure of Ollie McBurney, obviously gone to Las Palmas. Very interesting move for him. But yeah, I think Sheffield United will do okay this season. So I've gone with them in fourth. Third, I'm going to go with Luton Town. Uh, Luton Town, I've had an intro channel so far, signing Walters from Arsenal. Uh, but apart from that, they haven't really done much. A few players have been linked with departures away, like the likes of Kaminsky, Tahith Chong, Adebayo. Adebayo's been linked to a move to Turkey. Tahith Chong been linked with Premier League clubs, mainly Nottingham Forest. And um, I do definitely think uh, Kaminsky uh, will stay at Luton, but another player that has been linked to moves away. But I don't think that'll happen. He was was linked to Ipswich, however, with Ipswich saying Murich, I can't see it happening. So, yeah, Luton third. Second, I'm going to go with Leeds. And then first, I'm going to go with Burnley. Leeds United, I feel like re-signing Joe Roden was a huge bit of business for them. They struggled towards the first period of the season, the championship in real life last season. Uh, they struggled massively, but now signing some really good players, some experienced players like Joe Rothwell. Uh, obviously, what I just said, Joe Roden, some really good signings. I know they've signed some other players, but I'm struggling to think off the top of my head. If they can manage to keep some of all that, would be incredible, though I can't see. West Ham, Crystal Palace, uh, Villa are all looking at him, and Nonto as well. And I've decided to go Burnley as top under Scott Park, who's got the experience. Burnley have got the squad. They'll try and play the good football. I'm intrigued how they'll do. But yeah, mass thank you to everybody watching this video on the channel. If you guys have enjoyed it, drop a like, subscribe if you are new. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day, everybody. See you all soon.